What is up guys, Andy Forestine Runner here and today we're going to be comparing the Nike Pegasus 37 to the A6 Nova Blast and the New Balance 1080 version 10. As you probably gathered by the three shoes in the intro, today I'm covering my daily trainers and the reason I want to compare them in particular is because I've had such great success with the first two, the Nova Blast and the 1080 version 10 and from recent videos and comments highlighted in and around the Nike Pegasus 37 there's been quite a bit of negativity shown towards the shoe and I can totally understand that. Today my goal really is to highlight where this shoe I think has kind of gone wrong and where the other two shoes have gone right in terms of the daily trainer category. What I also want to hear from a lot of you guys is the people that have run in this shoe from lots of previous iterations. It's been great to talk to a lot of you over the past few videos of some of you have run in the Pegasus lineup right back in the 20s right the way through to now and a lot of you guys are saying how downhill it's gone so I need to get the conversation going and find out what has gone wrong with this shoe. So if you're excited for today's video guys make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and we'll start with this thing. Right, so just before we start the pros and cons on this shoe, two points just for clarity. If you're looking for full, full blah, I can't even speak. If you're looking for full technical specifications, you can head over to the channel and search up the model of the shoe, Nike Pegasus 37, first impressions, and you'll find that the first impressions video, all of my first impressions videos, has the full tech spec of the shoes on them. For me at the moment personally these comparison videos I like to just stick to the pros and the cons so you guys can get a good idea of how the shoe is working for me and maybe how it might work for you. And the second thing is I don't want this to come across as a negative Pegasus 37 bashing video. It's not going to be that. I just kind of want to highlight some of the areas where I think Nike have maybe gone like this with the Pegasus lineup and then really taken a curve off and hopefully we can get them back on the straight and narrow. Not that I think that anyone from Nike is going to be watching this but hopefully Hopefully all of our voices can be heard in some way, shape or form. But we are going to start with some pros because over the week I have started to enjoy the shoe a little bit more. It's not fantastic by any means, it's very, very average. But there are a couple of things that I'd like to highlight. The first thing being the foot shape and Nike suiting my feet. For whatever reason, I buy Nike shoes and they're very average and bog standard. I don't think I've reviewed bar the next percent a shoe by Nike that has blown me away. But what they do do is they foot, uh, fit my foot shape really, really well. A couple of points that you guys highlighted was how shallow the toe box area was and how the gusseted tongue in this shoe maybe caused a little bit of pressure around the midfoot. I've got to be honest with you, someone with a wide foot, it was a real surprise to hear those comments because I did not suffer with any of that. In fact, it worked really well for me in terms of the foot shape. And what I really did like is the way that I was able to get the shoe locked down after the first run. If you guys remember my first impressions, I suffered the worst heel slippage in the shoe, the worst heel slippage of any shoe I ever found. And thankfully, using the extra runners, not here I managed to get the shoe much more locked down and haven't suffered with that since. So they do fit my foot shape quite nicely and I did find that as the week progressed, as the week progressed it did get a little bit more, the React midsole did break in a bit more and it did become a little bit more pleasant rather than running on a brick like I have been doing in the React Myla. <clears throat> but what I want to highlight to you guys is the cons of this shoe and I think really where it has gone so horribly wrong. For those of you who have run in previous versions, we need to hear your voices in the comments below. You can tell me if the points that I'm highlighting now are ones that are new to this version or have been carried through the Pegasus lineup for a while. The first one for me was the initial lockdown problem. And what I've got to say is look how small those laces are. When I have used the extra runner's loop here, it has meant that I do not have much leeway to get a good lockdown in terms of with the laces. So maybe a longer set of laces are required if you're gonna use this extra loop. Once I got it, 
it's perfect, but getting it was a challenge. And I think half of the problem there, as I highlighted in my first impressions video, is this shallow depth around the ankle collar area. Your foot barely gets into the shoe. It really sits below the ankle bone quite a way. And I really found my ankle was quite exposed in this shoe and that led to a lot of heel slippage until I got this sorted. But still, even now, I think it's still an issue. I think it's causing a lot of you guys problems in terms of the fit. The second thing is, is the weight. The weight of this shoe is such a big problem. Just a couple of stats for you. Obviously 376 grams, 13.2 ounces, I think, in a UK size 30 more. I did go true to size and it is a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop, but weight 376 grams or 13.2 ounces, it's just criminal for a daily trainer. I do not like shoes that go over that 13 ounce mark. The Myler, as some of you have already seen, is over 14, but some of the places they could have saved weight is these things here. What are they doing with these extra bits of fabric? And these aren't light fabric. This isn't like fly wire. This is sturdy, sturdy material that's used all the way down here. You ditch those and just have normal eyelet chains here you've already saved yourself a few grams and that for me in my size will get it under the 13 ounce mark and the React midsole, we, I talk about it so much, it is such a dense and heavy foam. The one saving grace with this shoe is the airbag. If I was to do a Seth James Damore, I don't know why I called him his full, full name then, Seth Damore, he likes to do the squeeze test doesn't he? I really really have to squeeze this to get any form of give yet if I do it under here it goes in really really nicely but anywhere else along here it is such flipping Nora it is such a tough midsole to try and break in and for me it transpires that talking to you guys in the comments the smaller your shoe size the less of an issue the react is but for me you can see the weight gain and the other two shoes that we're about to talk about how much lighter they are in my size and I think to be perfectly honest with you those are the two main things the only other way they could shave some weight is get rid of some of this rubber it is excessive these lugs are a good two or three mil deep they're like almost a hybrid trail shoes they're almost as deep as the peg 36 trail shoes that I had last year testing completely unnecessarily big and these ridges here that I can't even begin to think that if they stripped off some of that outsole rubber on the bottom how much weight it would save but for me personally I think that's where the pegs gone run and for you guys talking in the comments how shallow the toe box is is causing you guys a lot of issues you can let me know in the comments below if that's a standard peg thing but that's pretty much about it for this shoe let's talk about the positives of the other two shoes I'm not going to break this up into each individual shoe I just want to talk about these two as a whole and my word don't they feel so much lighter in hand than the peg 37 so we've got the Nova Blast we've got the 1080 version 10 both great daily trainer shoes in my opinion in my size we'll go through very quickly how this thing got it right and then obviously we'll talk about the 1080 version 10 obviously the flight foam blast has been revolutionary in this shoe I don't want to go through how amazing I find this shoe because you guys know how much I love it but what I want to do is share the pros and the cons. Talking about the weight this thing is only 340 something grams in my size 12.3 ounces so again we're like 30 grams lighter instantly than the PEG 37. See down here we've got none of that excess material that the PEG's using just standard eyelet chains which is all you want you just want to get a decent lockdown. The material on the top again it is nothing fancy to it exactly what I would expect in a daily trainer but again look where they're saving weight on the outsole. This outsole rubber is grippy but look how thin it is. We we haven't got big thick lug depths we've just got a nice coating of outsole rubber being used and that's all you need you don't need anything anything extra this thing has 250 miles in it and it's doing absolutely outstanding and again the heel counter area this is this this is and feels no different to the peg 37 the main difference again though we've got a bigger area here to get your foot a lot more locked in. One of the comments that you guys did highlight with this shoe if you have a narrow foot is of course the width of the toe box. Again I didn't find it but a lot of you with narrow feet are swimming in here, a lot of you have half size down and found it so much better but on the whole you can see instantly those points I've highlighted is exactly where this shoe has saved weight and exactly where the peg 38 needs to look at saving some weight and again if I highlight it in the 1080 version 10 
we just have this lovely, one of the best uppers I've had all year. Nice stretchy moulds to my foot, gusseted tongue, um, slightly different heel counter area, but again, very thin material and perfect perfectly padded tongue just like well, just like both of the shoes again everything i'd expect in a daily trainer no fancy overlays and oh look no extra material holding the eyelet chain in so again we've saved some weight there and if we go to the outsole oh look we've got some coating of rubber but how thin is it do we have any big thick lugs on there no we just literally have a thin coating of outsole rubber in the high wearing areas nothing else and then of course we've got the fresh foam x which is a fantastic midsole my second favorite midsole um third or fourth favorite midsole i can't remember where i put it now behind fuel cell but it's still a cracking midsole and it's nice and soft it's nice and forgiving especially what i need well exactly what i need for the daily trainer even though even though you can see how much of it is used on this shoe it still saves weight and guess what it's exactly the same weight as the nova blast 345 grams or around 12.3 ounces it is 30 grams lighter so you can see just by comparing these two shoes exactly where the peg 37 needs to save some weight and instantly those points i've highlighted could actually change the shoe so i'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below of course overall i'm not going to say this shoe is a horrific shoe but you can see instantly by me comparing those other two shoes and highlighting some of those points how much weight it would save this shoe and my word wouldn't it change the outlook of this shoe yes there are some fundamentals that a lot of you guys can't get on with like as I said the shallow toe box and like other bits and pieces this this shallow bit here this needs to be built up a touch but if you just got rid of this rubbish here shaved some of this off my word it would just be a different shoe the airbag for me really is coming to its own as I said squeezing it there it really is good as the miles are progressing but it's just nothing special nothing like the other two shoes and i really hope in the 38 that they make some drastic changes and shave some of this weight off because my word react has absolutely killed a lot of nike shoes kushlon was so much better when i had that in the trail 36 my word that was a good midsole and that was my first experience of it i know you guys have run in kushlon far more so you might have more to say about that in the comments but going from kushlon to react in this thing for me has been a real real downer but as said i'd love to hear all your thoughts in the comments below i'd love to hear what you guys think about the peg 37 comparing it to the other two shoes have you got the other two shoes let me know in the comments below and of course let me know what your pros and cons are for all of them so that's it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did please smash that like button share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always i'll see you on the next one until then